In this episode, I compare a friend's tent box and I put it against my self-built camper van. Are they really worth all the money? But first, let's get parked up. Tentbox are not sponsoring this video, so expect an honest review. We've come up to Davidstow Airfield. It's like an ex-airfield base from World War II. And he's got a tent box, I've got my van. And I really want to see who's going to get the better night's sleep. It is a bit windy, so it, he's probably going to sleep better than me because I reckon the rattle and the wind noise from his tent is going to keep me awake all night. <laughs> so what happens, so that just comes off and then what, you just put it in the boot of the car? Yeah, I just took it, fold it up, chuck it in the boot I of the car. I would help you, but I need to show everyone how easy it is to do it one-handed. <laughs> Oh, it's got one of those ladders on it. Yeah, telescopic boy. I mean, the setup actually, it didn't actually take him that long to do. So, you know, I was kind of like, I like, I like having my van because you just park up and it's, it's done, you know, you're ready to go. But that wasn't actually, that didn't take very long to set up at all. Like literally like two minutes and it was, it was popped up. It's funny enough, out of the three ranges of tent box, this is the cheapest, but apparently it's the biggest, so I don't understand how that works. Because usually, if you're paying more, you'd want more for your money, wouldn't you? Yeah. Right, this is the tent box light. Now, when they first came out, when I got it, it was about 970 quid. That's how much it cost me. They're 970 now, quid? Yeah. Okay. But they're now retailing for £1,250. The question is, expensive tent or cheap van? Just for a comparison, my van conversion only cost me £700. Well, I suppose we'll have to wait till the morning to find out which one's gonna, who, who's going to have the better night's sleep. I'll tell you now, I'm going to be rough as arse all the way up in the morning. I'll <laughs> see if I'll go to sleep at all. <laughs> Take a picture of you buying stacks. Oh down. my god. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, the hat's going on. The hat's going on. Watershed, lovely. Oh, fucking two, two stoves this evening, so we can do pasta and the meat, which isn't meat, which is going to be veg. Do you know how I mentioned in the last video that I wanted to put some shelves up? Well, I put the shelves up, but I've got some jars up here now, look. Look at this, look. Very professional. Pasta, garlic, herbs, salt, some screws, look. That's just the stuff it all rattling. I've even got a plant. He's got a plant! <laughs> <laughs> Peppers, aubergine or eggplant to my American friends. There is said pan. Cool, thank you. So it's at this point that I realized that um, I've cooked way too much food to go in that tiny little pan. Yeah, I'm just gonna put little bits in at a time. Just so it doesn't over whoa, oh. overwhelm the pan. This is what it's all about though, mate. Being out in the middle of nowhere, cooking your dinner, realising you haven't got a big enough frying pan to do it. Let's get this pasta. I'm gonna use the show pasta. <laughs> Meaning it's just for show. <laughs> the dinner's starting to come along, it's looking good. This is pretty much done, we're just waiting for the pasta to boil now. Always the way. I've got two hobs, but it's never as quick as it should be. <laughs> Verdict. It's all right. Decent. Considering it was cooked out in uh, the middle of nowhere. Yeah, literally in the middle of nowhere. Wind died down though, innit? Yeah.
Hey! <laughs> <laughs> this way, it's the ladder. <laughs> it needs to be clipped up. There we go. There we go. We're sturdy. Oh, oh no, we're not. <laughs> so that step there just doesn't. Weird, right, let's try again. Try again. Ready? Yeah, go. Take three. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah! <laughs> this is well cool! Ah, look at this! I mean, you can hear the, the sheep a lot more than what you can in the van, but it's still pretty cool, mate. Yeah, it's not bad. You might be on a bit of a slant, you might want to sleep with your head up this side. Well, I think it's too high up. Hang on a minute, let me sort that out. Why have you got a metal pole in here? That's my beating stick if anybody tries to break in like they did with your van. <laughs> Get a clout round the end with that. Let <laughs> me out, please. <laughs> To be fair though, I've seen people when they have the ladders, that still supports them. But you got all your little pockets here, look. So you got all your pockets for your phone, whatever. You got them on that side. And you got like a little skylight. Yeah. See that? Oh, that's cool. Lovely. I do think you need to get some fairy lights in here or something there. Yeah, definitely. Throw it around the, the poles. Right, so Liam was literally just saying that where we're staying tonight, there's a, what was it called? It's an air traffic control tower, which is like right over there. I went to it in one of my old videos, but apparently it's one of the most haunted airfields in the country, this place we're in. But I know for a fact that in the daytime, that was quite creepy. So I'm thinking nighttime, I'm gonna get Blair Witch vibes. Whether you believe in ghosts or spirits or anything like that, there is a like an understanding that you know if you do Ouija boards or anything like that, they tend to follow you home. Yeah, and for tonight our home is literally over there. Yeah. So I ain't so, gonna be talking to no spirits. Well, at least I've got walls around me, and you've just got a tent. Yeah. So. What was this? Traffic control tower. In World War II, I think. A lot of graffiti, isn't there? Mm. thing I don't understand, we're at above ground level, but why is the ground in soil? I don't know. Weird, isn't it? Let's go upstairs. So, if it wasn't for the graffiti, yeah, there's a big opening there. If it wasn't for the graffiti, this would be like really blarity. Yeah. Strippers, bro. Yeah. All right, we're out on a ledge out here. We have just realised that that's like a sheer drop. Well, that was fun. Not. Can we go back to camping now? <laughs> Good riddance, good riddance, good riddance. Goodbye. See you later. Goodbye. See you Goodbye. later. Goodbye. There it is. There she blows. See, the light comes on from from a distance. All right, I'm off to bed, mate. See you in the morrow. I reckon you're going to have an all right night's sleep, mate. I don't think so. I think <laughs> I'm going to be sat out here at like three in the morning. <laughs> it's going to be fine. I'll be thinking of you when I'm in my nice cosy bed. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> I'll be spooning you in a minute. <laughs> 
So because I was so cold last time, I stayed in the van. I've got my sleeping bag here just in case I do get cold in the night and I can just slip into that. But anyway, I'll see you in the morning. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Sleep? Not really. Bit rough. Were you warm enough though? Yeah, I was warm enough to be fair. Yeah, I was plenty warm enough. Yeah. Yeah, but then I've got lots of layers on. I've got a feeling a horse came up to the uh, tent and started rubbing on it last night. Oh really? Yeah, because I heard like this last night, and then I heard, uh, and then I heard like the horse go, and then run off. <laughs> so. On it. <laughs> yes. I am wearing long johns. Lovely. Well, they're more like leggings, but. So just to clarify, Liam, what was it? 900 quid for the tent? And then he bought a mattress topper, which was memory quid. foam, 40 quid on top because it wasn't quite comfortable enough. Yeah. What, did that make a difference? No. Right, okay. Not at all. So I think that. If you're gonna sort of buy one of these, it might be worth just sort of trying one out, just to make sure. It depends whether you're like a princess in the pea like him and you need the best mattress going, yeah. or whether you can just sleep on a piece of wood. But to be fair, like some of the people are on the tent box forum groups and stuff, they've said that they've had this tent box and they've said that the mattress is fine. So it's literally personal preference. Yeah, you're just... I'm just a wet. What a beautiful morning. Are you ready for coffee? Yeah. Right, do you want some porridge? I've opened the lid now, so you have to have it. Coffee's really nice, Nescafe, thank you very much. So my final thoughts on this 970 pound tent for your car. It's ideal if you're camping in the Serengeti National Park and you don't want to get eaten by a lion, or if you want a quick weekend getaway with minimal effort to erect the tent. But for me, 970 pounds is a little steep for what is technically only a two-man tent. A two-man tent that you need to climb down in the middle of the night just to go to the toilet. Whereas my £700 got me a fully insulated van which sleeps two people, has a toilet and a place to cook. Well that's us pretty much all packed up, ready to go. So for me, I would much rather have a van than a tent box. But each to their own. I'm not saying that they're not a good idea. It's probably a good thing if you're a sort of person that doesn't want to spend ages converting a van or you know, doesn't want to necessarily buy a van. It took us literally seconds to put it on the roof originally, and you're pretty much ready to go. You can just pull up somewhere, open it up. For the money, it could probably be a bit comfier. What do you think? Just a bit. But to be honest, if you're gonna get one, spend the money and get a proper one. Don't get the cheap one like I did. Moral of the story. Yeah. Don't be a tight ass. <laughs> Good tips from Liam. All right, there's our campground. Nothing left. All packed up, ready to go. Lovely, jumbly. And I'll see you next week. Cheers! Mm -hmm.